We are in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 12. This is our uh, fifth message in the book of 1 John. Uh, We talked about fellowship. We talked about joy. Uh, We talked about how to deal with our sins. Uh, We talked about uh, the signs of salvation. He mentions three of them in the previous verses here. Let's read verses 12 through 14, just these three verses tonight. And he says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. You notice in this passage, and I titled the message, In What Class Are You? In What Class Are You? He talks about little children, fathers, and young men. And uh, you could ask yourself the question, am I in kindergarten with Miss Seahorn? Are you in grade school? Are you in junior high or high school or college? Uh, Do you have a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a doctor's degree? And, uh, And so he gives three classes or three different groups of Christians. Remember, he's talking to those who are saved Uh, But I want to go through these, and we'll go through them in the order of age. Uh, John does not do so because he goes from little children to father, and then down one step to the young men, and then he goes again, little children and fathers, and then young men. Uh, But I want to take them in in the order of their age, and we'll begin in uh, verse 12 uh, with the little children. I write unto you, little children... Because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. In verse 13, he says, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. When you got saved, of course, you became a babe in Christ. We all begin uh, in, in this same, I mean, we've all experienced being little children in the faith. We all can identify with this. We can identify with it physically. Uh, when we were just um, uh, young and we were learning to walk and we were learning to talk and we were learning to, um, you know, to eat solid food and to play and do all kind of things that little children do. So we all started out in this class. We've all experienced this and we can all identify with what he is saying uh, as when he talks about the little children. There are two things that he says about these little children. Uh, But before we go into these two characteristics, let us note some other things about the children. Uh, Number one, children are childish. Uh, We see the relationship between those two words, child, uh, children, and childish. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, And I, brethren, cannot speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even unto, as unto babes in Christ. So he says they were carnal, they were fleshly, they were um, childish, if you want to use that word. Uh, and so they're carnal. They have not yet learned how to walk in the spirit, uh, how to overcome the flesh. Uh, they're just children. Uh, you, you say, oh, my, you know, my children weren't like that. <laughs> uh, my children were like that. My grandchildren were like that. If you put one toy on the floor and put two of the kids down there, uh, they learn, the first word they learn is mine. <laughs> it's not mama. It's not papa. It's mine. And they'll fight and claw and scratch and bite and <laughs> all kind of things uh, to give that. They're childish. And, uh, and so, so are those who have just been saved can be very childish at times. And then secondly, we notice that uh, these children need to grow. Uh, and if they don't grow, we know something is wrong. In 1 Peter 2.2, 2, he says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, 
You ought to underline that word milk or highlight it, that you may grow thereby. Now I want you to turn to Hebrews 5.12. Dallas will have it on the board, but it's good to turn your Bible and underline and, and highlight. And, and, uh, and so there's a need to grow. He says, as newborn babes, folks who are just saved, they just have the sincere, which means the pure milk of the word, uh, that we that ye may grow thereby. So growth is comes by uh, taking in the milk of the word. But in Hebrews chapter five and verse twelve, he gives some very good and very serious um, comments about this. He says in verse twelve, Hebrews five. For when the time you ought to be teachers, in other words, they've been saved long enough, they should not still be children. He said, you ought to be teachers. You have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. The word oracle simply means the word of God, the principles of God, the precepts of God. It is like saying to a a sixth grader, you need to go back and take kindergarten over again. Uh, you didn't pass. You, they just passed you to get rid of you, I guess. But notice he says that they are become uh, such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. You don't take a baby, a newborn baby, uh, and give him meat and uh, other solid food. It's always just... Uh, liquid, they drink a lot of water, they drink their formula, which is called milk here. And then he says in verse 13, for everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. So again, he's talking about the babe. He's talking about little children, and he says they have to do milk because they are unskillful in the word of righteousness. Unskillful means they cannot digest that strong meat. Their stomach and their uh, digestive system has not matured to the place where they can take a T-bone steak and chew it up and uh, they don't even have any teeth. And uh, they... Uh, uh, they can't eat that. It would, uh, and if they could, it would upset their stomach and make them sick, because uh, they just cannot digest that. And so he likens those who are on milk as being unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. He is unskillful. He cannot handle very much of the word of God. He does not understand very much of the word of God. He says in verse 14, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by, this is important, reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So he says the strong meat belong to them that are full age. That would be the fathers. It could even include the young men. And he, and he really mentions that when he describes the young men. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised in both good and evil. So that person who has grown, that person who may be a young man or a father in the faith, he becomes a mature Christian. He can handle me because he is not only studying his Bible, he is practicing his Bible. Notice it says that has their senses exercised to discern, that means to understand, both good and evil. So he reads the Bible. What's it do? It tells him what's good and it tells him what's evil. It tells him what is right and it tells him what is wrong. And he takes those principles and these precepts, he applies them to his life, and by reason of use, practicing what he knows, what he has learned from the Word of God, and if he exercises his senses, his spiritual senses, he will become a mature Christian. There's too many people who, they may read their Bible, but they don't study their Bible. And they don't read their Bible to search out the will of God and to do 
uh, you know, to try to find out what is right and what is wrong. We can just take the Bible and we can just read it for uh, reading's sake. We want to get a, a, a read through the Bible and, and be able to sort of uh, just satisfy our uh, curiosity and we can read through the Bible in a year but still not really learn anything. You might become familiar with it, maybe familiar with the phrases and the books and and who's writing and some things about it, but you're not exercising. And so that is the key. These are these are great verses to meditate upon. Strong meat belongeth to them can be digested by those who are full age, and here he describes those who are full age who by reason of use, they're using the Word of God. They're applying the Word of God. They're taking the principles and the precepts uh, and the scriptures and they're exercising them and applying them and it helps them to discern both good and evil and if they choose the good, which is implied here in our text, we will grow in the grace of God. Number three, let me give you Matthew 21, 16. And Jesus said unto them, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Ye, uh, Yea, have ye never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? You know what young, you know what babies can do? What, what, uh, uh, and then you got to understand, when we talk about babies, we're not talking about, uh, spiritually, we're not talking about those who can't feed themselves or can't read, or, but he's talking about they're immature, they're childish, they, uh, they're not exercising their senses, they're not even maybe reading their Bible, but he says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. Even young Christians, even a Christian who's just been saved can testify and give praise to God. I was saved on a Wednesday night. On a Friday night, they had a testimony service and a, 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 a big bonfire and we gathered around that fire and gave, people gave testimonies and I testified of how God saved me on Wednesday night. And I walked down that uh, sawdust trail down near the fire and uh, I gave myself, my life, my heart to Jesus to serve him. And so even, you know, uh, these babes can praise the Lord. They can testify. Matter of fact, sometimes you get somebody who's just saved and they're so excited about being saved and they just want to stand up and testify. You know, they haven't, they're not older Christians. They haven't learned the lingo. Uh, you know, one guy... I uh, heard people saying amen, you know, and so preacher's preaching. The preacher said something good he liked, and he said, hot dog. <laughs> and so he, he, uh, he didn't know what to say, but he knew he was excited about whatever the preacher was saying. And so they haven't learned how to be hypocritical. They haven't learned how to fake a testimony. They're real. They're genuine. They just say what's on their heart. Just got saved, but they can testify and give praise unto God. And he said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Sometimes they give the best testimonies. Number four, I want you to go look back in chapter 1 and verse 3. He says, that which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us and truly our fellowship is with the Father with the Son Jesus Christ so we said last week or the first message we dealt with is that one of the reasons that Paul or John was writing was so they would learn how to have fellowship with God and uh, they would learn he talked about having the uh, the fullness of joy. They would have joy in their life. Chapter 2, verse 1, he said, I write unto you that you sin not. He wanted to have victory in their life. He goes on and says, we know that we pass from death and life because we love the brethren. He wanted them to know that they were saved. These things have been written unto you that believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. And so they, even though they've just been saved, 
they are included in this. Paul is, or John is still uh, including them in that group that can have fellowship with God. You don't have to wait until you're five or ten years saved and then learn how to have fellowship with God. The moment a person is saved, they are reconciled. All their sins are forgiven. There is absolutely nothing between them and God. They have been forgiven. And at that moment, they are brought into fellowship with God. And they can have fellowship. And they can learn from there how to have fellowship and how to maintain that fellowship. So you don't have to be saved a long time. It's a blessing to know uh, that when you get saved, you're all reconciled. That means all enmity has been put away and you are brought into uh, the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ and you can have fellowship. You don't have to wait till you're a young man. You don't have to wait till you're a father. He's talking about these three, and he's following chapter 1. He's still, you know, continuing a thought that says, I'm writing these, that ye may have fellowship with us, and our fellowship is with the Father, with his Son, Jesus Christ. So he's saying to these babes, he's saying to these little children, you can have fellowship with God. What a blessing that every person who is saved can have fellowship with God. Now, there are two things he says about these little children. In verse 12, he says, I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his namesake. Uh, a person who's just been saved. When I got saved, I didn't know anything. I was raised in Sunday school. We went to Sunday school every Sunday. But in Sunday school, all I learned was Bible stories. I knew about creation. I knew about Adam and Eve sinning. I knew about uh, Noah and the flood. I knew about Abraham. I, I knew about uh, the kings, David. I knew about um, uh, Daniel in the lion's den. And you get in the New Testament and the, the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's just Bible stories. And so I knew Bible stories, but I didn't know any Bible, really. I didn't know principles and precepts. I didn't understand the Bible. Uh, you know, I looked at it just, well, it's a book of, you know, just a book of stories about God and about God's people and about Jesus and about the people he preached to. And so the only thing in verse 12 that a real born-again babe in Christ knows is this. My sins have been forgiven. Do you remember? <laughs> do you remember that first um, joy, that first flush of Holy Ghost joy when you realize your sins had been forgiven? I know that I had struggled with this for years. I'd made a couple professions of faith before this. No burden was lifted. No sins were uh, felt. I didn't feel forgiven. I got up the same way. I went down. But on that June 11th of 1969, maybe because of a greater understanding, I remember when I got up off my knees, that joy, that peace had come into my heart. And I knew one thing. My sins had been forgiven. My guilt had been forgiven removed. I was now, I now had peace and I had the joy of the Holy Ghost in my heart. You don't have to wait. You can, that, that's, that is what these babes knew. They knew their sins were forgiven. They didn't know a whole lot, but they knew their sins were forgiven. Secondly, they knew they were saved. Notice in verse in chapter 12, verse 13, the last part says, I write unto you, little children, because you have known the Father. So I knew my sins had been forgiven, and I knew that I had been brought into a new relationship with God, and that assurance came to my heart that not only did I just think I was saved, or guess I was saved, or... Uh, just feeling forgiven, but I knew I had been forgiven. And that's what he's saying here, right into your children, because you have known the Father. You came to know him. Listen, salvation is not work. Salvation comes by the grace of God, but salvation uh, is 
is being brought into that relationship, that fellowship with the Father and with the Son. He says, you have known the Father. And so he is writing to Christians. Uh, if he were writing to a church, which he's not, this is called uh, one of the general epistles. It was just written and passed throughout all of the churches, copied and passed to uh, all the churches that knew John at least, and probably later on those who uh, knew Paul and in way, and so they, they recognized this as, as supernaturally inspired of God. Men didn't write stuff like this. They didn't understand stuff like this. But I, I remember being saved. I remember my sins being washed away. Or well, we sing that song, I remember when my burden rolled away. I remember my burden being rolled away. And I knew the Father in the sense that I knew I had been brought into a relationship with him and that my sins were forgiven and the Holy Ghost, the Bible says, bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and that we are saved. That's what a child, that's what a babe in Christ knows. He didn't know much. He couldn't name the kings of Israel. He might not even be able to tell you uh, if the flood came first or if Moses divided the Red Sea first. He didn't know if Abraham came first or uh, if uh, Joshua came first. He couldn't put the things in order. He didn't know the Bible. But he knew two things. <laughs> I know my sins have been forgiven. I've, and I know that I've come into a new relationship with God. And I have come to know the Father. And uh, notice, secondly, the young men. In verse 13, I write unto you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. These young men have now got a hold of the Word of God, which the Bible says is the sword of the Spirit. They have learned to use the Word of God, and they have victory, they have experienced victory over the devil. That's a big step. Going from a babe, man, you get, listen, we don't let, you know, we don't think of kids as being really ready to leave home until they're 18. And so we, we, we children spend 18 years at home being taught and nurtured and how to talk and, and uh, they learn in school, they start out with their ABCs, they learn phonics, they learn how to read, uh, they learn about science, they then just, just go on in, a, in growing in their knowledge. But these young men have overcome the wicked one. They have grown, and by reason of use, they have been able to take the sword of the Spirit and defeat the devil, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. They have experienced that. And the key to that is in the next verse. Verse 14. I have written unto you, young men, because you are strong, not physically, spiritually. And here's the key. And the word of God abideth in you. Well, if they read a verse and then just forgot about it, they meditated, they thought about it, and he said, it's abiding in you. Got the word of God. Maybe they memorized some of the word of God. And you got to remember this. In that day, the only thing they had was the Old Testament. How would you like to be a, a, try to become a mature Christian just by reading and studying the Old Testament? We probably couldn't do that today. Thank God we have the New Testament. But they were strong because the word of God, not because of their natural strength or their mental abilities or prowess, but because they had been studying their Bible. Study to show thyself to prove unto God a workman need not shame, rightly dividing the word of truth. How did Jesus overcome the devil? He quoted the Bible. When the devil came and said, turn these stones into bread, now, he'd been fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. You know he was hungry. But he overcame the temptation of the devil by quoting Scripture. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Took him on the temple. Said, you cast yourself off. The Bible says 
the angels of God I have charge over you and they'll protect you. And he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And so there was three times that Satan presented a temptation and each time Jesus overcame that by quoting Old Testament scriptures. We need to learn to do that. We need to learn the Bible, meditate on the Bible. And you might not be able to, you know, perfectly quote a verse, but you'll be have something uh, in your repertoire of scripture that you can battle with the devil. You can win victory over the devil. They were strong because of the word of God. It was the word that gave them strength, studying their Bible. I tell you, people today need to get off Facebook and get their face in the book. We spend too much time. One of the preachers this week, he said, he's uh, talking about their cell phones. He said, some of you talk to Siri or Google or Alexis more than you talk to God. And that's right. You will not make it past childhood until you learn the importance of studying your Bible. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. You need to get you a notebook and a pen and a highlighter, and you need to write down a principle, something. You read a scripture, and you say, boy, I never thought of that before. Write that down. Keep your journal of your Bible study. You will be a babe. You will be childish. You will be saying with the children, mine, selfish, self-centered, defeated by the devil, unless we get back into our Bibles. How much we need the Bible. Thirdly, in the last group, he calls the fathers. Verse 13, I write unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. Verse 14, he repeats that. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. In these others, the young men and the children, he mentions at least two uh, characteristics of that group, but this one, the fathers, he says, here's one thing I know about fathers. They have known him who is from the beginning. Not only just know him as, as a saved, but Paul said after 30 years of being saved in ministry, Paul said, oh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. And so the emphasis is given to this one thing, this one classification. They have arrived at fatherhood and through years of walking with God, walking in the spirit, they're learning to hear his voice and responding to his word and his voice. The Spirit does speak to us. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit. The Spirit helps us pray, so we know not how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. He says, you've known him. You've known the eternal God, him that is from the beginning. He was in the beginning. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning, Christ created them. And he made all things. And without him was not anything made that was made. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. He became flesh. And so it's the one classification. They came to know him personally and spiritually and intimately to know to the definition means to perceive to understand to feel to see beyond the surface to be you know to see deeper than just the surface you know what that'll take it'll take time you won't get up and rush through the day and forget about prayer and bible reading or come home and get busy and don't read your Bible and don't pray and don't meditate. You can't do that and become a father in the faith. We need fathers in the faith. We need a fathers in the church. We need some good, godly, mature, spirit-filled Christians who know him intimately. This is the same words that used. You remember in the Old Testament? Um, the Bible says, and Adam knew his wife Eve, and she conceived and bore a son, Cain. 
That's the same word. They, they, he came to know. And there's other instances that when, when a man took a wife, and the Bible says, and he knew his wife. That's intimate, personal, one-on-one -on -one fellowship. Isaac and Rebekah, and he took her into his tent, and Isaac knew Rebekah. That means they became husband and wife. Physically, they became husband and wife. So let's ask our question tonight. What class are you in? Are you still, after years of being saved, just a babe? Maybe you have come to the place of being a young man. You've had some victories over sin, some victories over the devil. But have you come to that place when you can say, I'm, I'm a father in the faith? I have a certain amount, at least the minimum amount, of spiritual maturity about me that I could be called a father in the faith. Are you in kindergarten, grade school, junior high, high school, college? You got a bachelor's degree, master's degree, doctor degree? Where are you in this in these three groups? You're in one group or the other. You're either a babe, a young man, or your father in the faith. Where are you? How long have you been saved? You know, and again, you take a little babe and he doesn't grow. After a year, he's still a babe that you can hold in one hand. He still doesn't talk. He still doesn't walk. He don't even crawl. And I'll tell you what you'd do. You'd run him to the doctor and say, Doc, something's wrong with my baby. He, he's the same as he was the day he was born. And we know that something's wrong when children don't grow. And it concerns us when children don't grow. And we ought to get concerned about ourselves if we're not growing in Christ-likeness, growing in the faith, growing in the knowledge of God. They had known him. They came to that personal, intimate fellowship with God, personally, spiritually, intimate knowledge of God. You know, the Bible says, I think it's in Psalm 78 when he's giving the history of the children of Israel. And he says this, the people saw the works of God, but Moses knew the ways of God. They saw God work. They saw the sun stand still in Joshua's day. They saw man that came from heaven. They saw great victories over the Amalekites and the the Amorites and all the all the Philistines and those in the in the Promised Land. They saw that, but but listen, Moses knew the ways of God. He just didn't see what God did. He knew what God was doing, and he knew how God was doing it, and that's because he walked with God. And the Bible says of Moses that God spoke to Moses as a man speaketh to his friend. That's how close Moses was. Abraham is called the friend of God. My friends are closer to me than my own family, especially my distant family. But we need to get concerned about where we are spiritually what is keeping you from growing? Number one is not spending enough time in the Word of God, letting other things take the place of the Bible. Get your notebook, get your pen, get your highlighter, highlight verses that just sort of, you know, you're reading a chapter and all of a sudden something pops off the page and underline that verse. Next time you go through there, you'll see that highlight and you'll say, I remember God speaking to me and showing me what that verse meant. Write it down. Keep a record. Keep a journal. And you'll grow to become a father in the faith. Let's bow for prayer, please.